Prime Minister Motley has made history being the first sitting Prime Minister of Barbados to visit Kenya and East Africa. And I believe that this historic visit is just another verification and illustration of the very strong resolve by her and her government to not only solidify and deepen relations between Kenya and Barbados, but also with the East African region and Africa as a whole. Kenya equally is keen to take steps to enhance political, economic, as well as our social and cultural ties with Barbados and indeed, by extension, with the people of the Caribbean region for the mutual benefit of our people. And the Prime Minister's visit has provided us a wonderful opportunity to discuss and indeed accelerate actions towards this aspiration. We've had the opportunity to have fruitful deliberations. She has had the opportunity to meet many government officials, but also private sector players and other citizens of our country. And we've held discussions centered on the need to cooperate and work more closely in a number of fields, amongst them ICT, agriculture, tourism, health, education, culture, our maritime economy, sports, amongst other things. We've also discussed and agreed on mechanisms for boosting commerce and explored ways of overcoming the challenge of connectivity, which remains a huge trade barrier between us and which needs to be addressed. A very positive note today, we have also witnessed the signing of an agreement of avoidance of double taxation. I believe that this will spur more investments by our two private sectors to encourage more trade and investment between ourselves. Providing a platform ultimately for jobs as well as social mobility between our two peoples. We've also signed a memorandum of understanding on health cooperation, a move I believe that will see both countries provide quality healthcare services to our people. These are just initial steps and indeed, both myself and Prime Minister Motley are committed that this is just a, spring, a springboard from which Kenya and Barbados will forge many, many more agreements, all aimed at forging a long-lasting, progressive, and mutually beneficial relationship. The multiplicity of agreements that we are signing the actions that are being taken, and it is not just government to government, but it is also with respect to different players within our countries. We are also seeing the signing of agreements by our respective private sector organizations. We are also seeing the signing of agreements by the respective stock exchanges of our two countries. We are also hoping to have an agreement between CARICOM and Kenya and between CARICOM and the Organization of African Union. And it is against that background that as a result of your trip to Bridgetown and our meeting with the Chairman of CARICOM and the Secretary General of CARICOM that we proposed to be able to host the first CARICOM Africa Summit. And you have graciously accepted that that should be in Nairobi here in June on the eve of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting which will take place in Kigali. But the people of our countries will ask, what does that mean for us? How do these agreements change the quality of our life from a day-to-day -day basis? And the truth is that this is just the architecture that we are building to be able to unleash the potential of our two peoples. Yesterday, we had the good fortune of being hosted by the governor of the Central Bank and the indigenous banks of Kenya and some of the fintech companies, and we will host your indigenous banks within six weeks in Barbados to begin to explore the opportunities of them investing into our part of the world. 
Barbados has lead responsibility for the CARICOM single market and single economy. So that we're conscious just as we are in a region where you belong to the East Africa community, as well as now the Africa free trade community, we also will be able to open up for you the wider CARICOM Caribbean community. And to that extent, therefore, our entrepreneurs and our businesses will have access to larger markets and greater opportunities. The ability to also encourage investment between our two countries such that we can have our indigenous private sector diversify their investments. And at the cultural and social level, we're starting it with the children. And we've already exchanged a number of schools at the primary and the secondary level with each other so that those schools can partner without reference to our positions of, of, of high state getting into their way. And equally, we have agreed that at the cultural level, in the course of the next year, we should be able to facilitate the exchange of artist practitioners so that once they start to get together, they too will create at a different level as well as our software developers and um, entrepreneurs in that respect. I believe that this is the beginning of a true, true partnership that can make the difference not just to the people of Kenya and to the people of Barbados, but I believe that we are, by taking hold of our future, saying to the rest of the world that the centuries of separation must now be left on the books of history rather than being part and parcel of our arrangements for the future. And to that extent, if we can solidify the transport links by building the air and sea bridges, then I believe we will be unlocking the potential of our two regions.